This show is brought to you by our generous patrons at patreon.com slash falloutlorecast. Robots Radio presents the Fallout Lorecast. Welcome to the Fallout Lorecast, a place for the Fallout community to come together to explore the boundaries of our knowledge about the world of Fallout. Vault Dwellers, Wastelanders, welcome back to the Fallout Lorecast. We are here again with you on this Monday night. It's the uh, only thing that makes a Mondays better is this show. And so we're here. I'm your host, Tom or Robots. And my co-host, Lainey or Neos Pandora, is here with me. How's it going, Lainey? Hello, hello. Oh, it's going great. I uh, don't sound like I have COVID anymore which is cool. That's, I did not have COVID, but it's really inconvenient to sound like you're sick when there's a pandemic happening. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I am in full agreement with that. That is not something <laughs> you want to do. Um, not ideal. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're sounding better. And um, <laughs> this week uh, we're, we're here live as usual, Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash robots radio with our live chat friends welcome to this show everybody glad you guys are here and welcome, this, welcome. welcome welcome and this week we are <laughs> diving into another faction from fallout 76 last week we talked about the responders and this week we're talking about the free states and i think the free states get overlooked a lot i think I, we hear a lot about the responders the new responders there are lots of different people out there in the Fallout community, role playing as characters, you know, they're they're part of like the responders or they're part of the Brotherhood or or whatever, right? But we don't hear a whole lot about the free states. And I think that they're probably not getting enough credit for some of the things that they got right. <laughs> Lainey, would you agree about that? And we'll get into yeah, the details in sure. a little bit. Yeah. I, for sure. I, I think that um they probably weren't given enough credit, especially before the war. And this is going to bring up some very interesting concepts about what it means to be uh, in a minority of people who are correct about things that sound very extreme. And it uh, this could relate to modern current day politics stuff, but it actually doesn't because <laughs> it's not quite the same thing. So we're going to we're going to avoid making connections there. We're just going to talk about this situation. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Was that a cat? Is that Yeah, that was sushi. Or was that like a dying death claw? I don't that know. That was a cat. Okay. That's just how she talks. <laughs> That's just how she <laughs> talks. So let's get into this, Lainey. What what do we know about the uh, beginning of the free states? How did this start out? What are the free states? So, so there isn't really a proper beginning um but they did exist before the war even and they existed obviously before the bomb drop um they were an anarchist militia movement basically meaning that they don't believe in having a normal hierarchy in their government right they want everyone to be equal um mm -hmm. and be able to kind of make decisions for themselves and choose how they want to live their lives right and that uh, and that's right off the bat just, just to jump in here let me let me just jump in real quick right off the bat when you hear anarchist militia, that probably rings with a negative connotation, right? Right. Most of us go, and that's a anarchist militia. That sounds terrible. And I think that's probably why um, people don't gravitate towards the free states is because if you don't actually look at what they were about, it just sounds like they're another like chaotic force in the wasteland. Like you don't know, or or crazy, um, you know, or you know, like or uh, the cult of the Mothman, or or something like that, right? Yeah, And for all intents and purposes, lots of people in Fallout did believe that the Free States, at least before the bomb drop, were crazy. Mm -hmm. um, they were ex considered to be extremists. Uh, so yeah, so they're an anarchist militia that uh, was united by, by their skepticism about the U.S. government and its ability to ability and intention to protect its citizens during world conflict. Mm -hmm. um, so they from the get-go whenever that get-go was because it, it <laughs> okay so i have a few things right so like the the rhetoric in what i was reading mm -hmm. implied that they existed before the war but lots of the things about them are direct results of um thoughts that one would have during a wartime when their government isn't 
holding up if that makes sense yeah well so i'm not quite sure when like what the dates are or anything right Um, right and and some of that stuff is very very vague um but what we do know about uh the state of the united states before the bombs dropped was that there were there were continual conflicts there were continual Mm -hmm. issues and conflicts for decades um lack of oil uh strategic movements against specific types of other external forces whether they're political movements or um militarization and it when we talk about the the great war really we're just talking about that moment when things came to an absolute head with china right and the bombs dropped um but before this happened there were a number of other conflicts happening uh the united states was taking over mexico and canada i mean there were there were lots of other conflicts so to have a group of people right. around looking at the things the united states was doing and their inability to take care good care of their people and the uh kind of conquest empire empire kind of focus that they had then it, uh, it doesn't point to a specific date but it definitely shows that there were people of this mindset, um, con- you know, coming together and forming for some period of time before the bombs dropped. Right, right. And um, I mean, absolutely, it would just get worse as as things progressed. But none of that comes out of nowhere. Right. It wasn't like, oh, no, one day there was a nuclear fallout and nobody saw it coming. It well, had to climb to reach that point. Right, yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be specific, a lot of people didn't see it actually coming on that in that right. moment. Uh, what's interesting about the free states is that they they were fervently um, predicting that things were going to come to a head and that nukes would be released. In fact, they were right. one of the only groups outside of, say, vault Tech, who... Uh, I, let's... And the let's, cult of the Mothman. And the cult of the Mothman. Let's say this. <laughs> let's let's just clarify from this perspective. They were an extra, like outside of the government group, who had correctly predicted this, which was rare. Um, right. The the United States government was a little bit side, you know, hit on the side, but they were in conjunction with Vault Tech. Vault Tech was preparing these vaults. There was connection there. They were planning for worst case scenarios. Nobody specifically predicted a specific, you know, a date. Um, but the Free State's militia was creating their own places where they could hold up in case of nuclear war, and then. A month before it happened, went into hiding in preparation for it, which is kind of phenomenal. They almost hit the the date right on the nose. It's pretty wild, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's jump let's jump back a little bit and give you know a little more context. Right, this existed before all of that. Like we're getting ahead of ourselves. Right. All right. So let's go back <laughs> there. Much it. more. Um, and so let's talk about uh, the free states before. The wasteland right yeah. Before, what was it what was uh, it like what was it like for them so uh just like after the bomb drop they were in harper's ferry which is a it's a town and in uh, appalachia right we visited in, in appalachia. right 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 you can go there and um they were very prominent in this place it wasn't like a base per se but lots of people were there. it's like um it was like their hub. It was the like, hub for where they would all gather yeah, and meet, basically. Yeah, I was like, compare it to like Mormonism. You know, like uh-huh. there's like, this is the place where a lot of people are, but it doesn't mean you have to be there. Right, um, right. So, yeah. So, Harper's Ferry was like the hub though, right? Uh, that's a great explanation. Uh, but the town did not like them. <laughs> it wanted nothing to do with them. The people who were parts of part of the free states were super strange, right? They seemed really weird because they would talk about uh essentially what sounded like the end times because it it was the end of america i guess right Mm -hmm. and um they would only pay for things in cash and they would stock up on necessities and canned goods it was like they were constantly preparing and a lot of ammo yeah yeah Yeah. a lot of ammo and this was really strange but at this point it wasn't really dangerous people weren't too concerned um until (laughs) 2077 when they started getting a little feisty and feisty, decided huh? to start they would they would pick fights with other people particularly people who are uh like 
so like they were considered to be extremists probably in like a very anarchist way uh but of course they're extre- extremists of every variety and so anyone that was particularly patriotic they would just have like street fights with um, right and, and which let's, is not good and, and and let's let's create the dividing line there there were there were the free states who were considered by the majority of americans to be anti-patriots because they were for the the pulling down of the united states government for the betterment of the people and that was their justification right. um everyone else considered themselves to be patriots because they were for maintaining the current system of government right and these kinds of labels are very tricky because <laughs> i mean and, and i'm going to avoid connecting this to modern day politics but there's always the question of if a system fails is it more patriotic to fight the system or is it more patriotic to hold on to that system even if it's failing this is one of those right. dilemmas well, right and not. usually that is defined by who wins the situation those are then the patriots yeah. right um, yeah i think uh it's important to the, the divide there really becomes between are you loyal to because like everyone's going to be like oh i'm loyal to my country but does that mean you're loyal to the morals that the country was there to the ideology uh, like right the, the ideology like in the first place or are you like are do you like the people like if you're and i and we could get into this like forever but it's it's a different mindset right it's mm-hmm. they could be equally you could be equally patriotic as someone else but it could mean something entirely different right 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 <laughs> um but of course the free states exist out of that narrative completely because they've decided that the, the best thing to do is to give the power to the people 100 mm-hmm. percent um so and people thought that that was crazy <laughs> right and then they got called um, out on it and it turned into conflict in right. the streets and, and so this reminds me of um like the red scare and like uh who was it that would are we basically talking? claim that people were communists in in real history in real yeah, american like 1950s history. uh yeah the, the communist um yeah yeah it was and and we're going through something very similar to that now this idea that like if you label somebody a thing then they are in the enemy of the people it's basically saying they are they are un-american and anti-american um right um and part of the problem was in i mean in our actual history right if this was in the 50s right um with the red scare <laughs> was that people were being called out as being communists when they weren't and then really terrible things would happen to them right, um, right. it was a, it was a very there's... convenient way to label your enemies in order to get rid of them and right. i have some i have some pictures here i'm going to put up some pictures as we talk of uh the free states and some of the propaganda that the united states government was using against them because i think this is interesting yeah it's a really big deal and that actually leads us into the this is a good segue um to the next part where they Obviously, you can't just be fighting in the streets all the time uh, just because you disagree on anything. <laughs> really, you can't just fight people um, or you shouldn't. So uh, the town already didn't want the free states there and they were growing increasingly violent. And the United, the United States military decided that they needed to put an end to it. So they released this propaganda that you just mentioned that you're showing if you guys are watching this live. Yeah, um, like, like, for example, this sign says but, only a communist spy turns his back on America and has the symbol for the free states, which is the broken chain with the star in the middle. Um, and then some free states member scratched out the middle of it and says and it wrote in government lies on top of it. Yeah. So you could see that there were like this back and forth between the two right and it's not just um it's very clear that this this propaganda i mean of course it goes for in general right you want to rally people with your country but it was a direct attack on the free states because they were just becoming so much of an issue to the extent where the u.s military started um seizing their property if they learned that you were a member of the free states they would go and take your things because they would claim that it was part of uh it was involved in seditious activity Mm -hmm. right and so they would just take your stuff um and it escalated to a point where eventually uh a leader of the movement was arrested and the free states decided that it, it had gone too far right what like what was this person actually arrested for it. They didn't actually do anything wrong. They were just arrested because they were a leader of a movement that the country disagreed with, right? So that's, it was an issue and people were heated and the free states decided they needed a new course of action. So they secede from the United States. They decide that they are just going to become their own entity. They don't have to worry about it anymore. Right, which is kind of interesting because they're they're in Appalachia. They're in the middle of West Virginia. 
right, uh, right. Which, yeah you it's know, not like um it's not like they're an island like off the a, coast or something you know like right or like even if you think about uh if we think about america and think about how america began right we we declared our independence and we were on a different continent than the people we were declaring our independence right, from right. and so you have a lot of space there but this is essentially the same kind of idea right they were unhappy with the government they didn't like the way that they were treating people um they felt like they were being attacked uh, personally and they were <laughs> and they decided that they were going to get out of there but now they're in the middle of they're not in the middle but you they're know surrounded like they're, by they're, the they're nation that by... they've now divided themselves from yeah yeah even in the civil so war there was do? the mason dixon line and if you were north of that you were part of the north if you're south of that you're part of the south yeah th- this is like you're completely encompassed by the the nation that you just seceded from which is odd right yeah so so where do they go they go underground so they've they've been creating these bunkers this whole time, <laughs> which where do you think all this ammo and all this food and all the other things that they were paying for with cash was going, right? All this weird stuff that people thought they're like, oh, those weird free states, they're just stockpiling goods for no reason. They were in these bunkers. They were prepared for the worst. Mm-hmm. And so they just move into them. Um, yeah, Crystal in chat <laughs> says that's the de- definition of an enclave. I guess, I guess <laughs> you could say that that is an, a definition of that. Sure. Yep. Part of a nation's completely <laughs> um, surrounded by enemy territory. Yeah. 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 Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so they they secede, they move underground, and they stay there for about two years, a little over a year, because um, they go in in 77, right? That year's a big year. Yeah, That's 77 the is when that, the bombs like, drop. So they, they, everything got crazy. Actually, they, they go under, I believe they go underground in September, which is the month before the bombs drop. So it wasn't even... Yeah. It wasn't even most of a year. It was actually very, very, very well, close so in time. They were, right. So they were there they, conveniently at a good time, but they stayed in there until 2079. They right, didn't leave yet. Right, right, right. So they, they didn't leave right after the bombs dropped. I, I see. I, right. I get what you're saying there. Yes. Right. Yes. So, um, but 2077 wasn't just a big year from the bomb drop. It was also the say all of these things, all the crazy things with the government and the seceding and the arrests and the seizure of land all happened that year. Like it really hit a point, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so two years pass, the bombs have fallen, things are looking rough, but they decided it's time to go back out there. And uh, because of their call to succeed, succeed, not the right word, to succeed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They, well, they succeeded. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So they leave, and of course, they're still near uh, familiar areas and then go back to harper's ferry where there are su- survivors and they take a lot of them in um and it's kind of funny because a lot of the people who survived knew who the free states were and would have been people in the past that uh thought they were crazy yeah the, and then, the same people who they may have been fighting in the streets were now depending on them for their right? own survival and I think that this is probably a good place to pause for us to kind of hold off on the rest of this for the second half of the episode, because sure. I, I want I let's let's just put this where it is before we move on to the middle of the, ep- the, the middle and then the end of the episode. You again, and I do this on a lot of the shows, put yourself in the shoes of either one of these sides. Imagine you're part of the free states and you have spent years telling people, warning them about what the government is doing, that they're not trustworthy, and they were right, the government was not trustworthy, look at what vault was doing, that war was going to happen, and they were right, war was going to happen, that they need to start stockpiling food and ammo and those kinds of things and go underground in order to protect themselves, and they were right about this, and they got fought back against by the US government, they got ridiculed by their neighbors, they got called out in the street, and they eventually had to go underground in order to follow through with the things that they knew were going to happen or at least believed were going to happen and were correct about and here they are a few years later coming back up to the service surface coming back to the community that ostracized them and finding the same people who ostracized them in need and yet Mm -hmm. they were willing to help out yeah, they just took them in. I think there was that, no conflict there. I think that this really goes to show the character of some of these people, that they were not fighting against the government for vindictive reasons or for power. Mm-hmm. The, it, it really shows that the focus of the group was actually the survival and the well-being of the people in the community. And 
it I think that's the proof is that when they come back out and everything is blown to hell and everybody's suffering they then help and take in people outside of their group even when they were ostracized by them already and I think that's right. phenomenal and and I want you to kind of stew on that as we get to the middle of the episode a m- middle of the show because it's it's an interesting dynamic it takes a lot of honor it takes a lot of personal I don't know, gumption? I don't know what the word is, but to not hit back on these people when they're down and to instead instead offer a helping hand, um, even if they might get that hand bit because those people are still bitter. Um, so think about that. Let's move into the middle of the show and then we'll be back with the rest of what happens to the Free States. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. Welcome to the middle of the show. We're in the part of the show where we thank our patrons for being awesome because they genuinely and truly are. This is also the part of the show where I will call out our tier five or higher patrons. Amelia R, Justin S and Matt B again are still part of that list. Thank you to you three and everyone else. We will be doing our patron episode next week. We've got we're only one week away on the 25th at this time slot. And if you would like to join us, there's a whole bunch of us. We're discussing right now in the Discord what the topic will be. We're throwing around some ideas. If you'd like to join in on that conversation or join in on the pre-conversation about what the conversation was be, will be about, then check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash falloutlorecast. If you'd like to just get even ad-free episodes or a permanent discount on the merch store, which I don't bring up very much, but anybody tier two and higher gets permanent discounts on the merch store, uh, 10 or 20% if you're one of the higher tiers, and many other wonderful things, then go go sign up on the Patreon. And we're very, very close to that $500 goal in order to stick that, we got to stick that five hundred dollar goal and keep it for two months for me to officially go get my tattoo. So you're gonna get yatted. I'm gonna get <laughs> yatted. What does that even mean? <laughs> tatted. <it's just laughs> yeah, it's tattoo. Yat, yat for tattoo. Yatted. Uh, kids, I don't know. I don't speak your language. Um, but uh, it would be amazing if you guys can help push us up over that goal. That would be phenomenal. And then you can help me uh, figure out what I'm going to get on, on my arm, like on my shoulder. Um, so go check that out. Thank you again to all of our patrons. You guys are phenomenal. And one last thing I want to do is I don't think I called out the people who signed up in December specifically. Let's call out uh, Shane P. And I'm looking through the list right now. I believe it was Shane P. Was uh, no, that was November. I'm on the wrong month. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong month. Okay, December. Uh, we have Anthony M. signed up. Justin S., who I mentioned already, uh, signed up, and Matt B., who I also mentioned, signed up <laughs> in December. So those were our new patrons from December. So thank you to our new patrons from December. We've got some others that have joined us in January, and you guys will get called out next month. All right, let's go back to the rest of our discussion about the free states. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. So they've resurfaced. They've taken on helping the their neighbors. Uh, a lot of people in need. It's been a few years since the bomb drop. Bombs dropped. People are still trying to pull their lives back together, and we have a situation where they have. A secure place they've got food they've got resources and the people around them need their help so where does it go from there laney so well they move in um back into harper's ferry and they they take the people in um this is a really good spot though for more reasons than just the familiarity of the land and the manpower um that they were able to acquire because it was uh, a good location for trading, which is essential. And we talked about this with the responders one where the responders were able to pick locations to set up as their base where they could be close to the Brotherhood and the Free States and so on. And the Free States were also in the very convenient area for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but also because they uh, were near the Grafton Dam and they had members that were living you know, all through this whole area. And the Grafton Dam would help shield the town from the west, I believe, uh, from possible raider attacks uh anything anyone traveling through the savage divide in free states territory would be relatively safe Mm -hmm. uh which is really cool so it would allow traders and anyone trying to settle uh within the wasteland to to get through uh pretty much unharmed which is really awesome and also just goes to show the free states 
their their real motives are just to help people. Like they just want people to succeed in whatever that looks like. Um, right, right. Survive, safety, well being. Right. Those kinds of things. So you don't have to be a part of the free states to, um, or even to agree with them to benefit from uh, their existence in the wasteland, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, so this is a really good area, and. <laughs> um harper's ferry specifically uh, and yeah. that it's kind of central and, and works as a good like trade hub connecting some of the different regions right um and they're a really interesting group uh especially in the way that they ended up deciding to run things run their whole operation mm -hmm. because they different than any other faction that we see they're not like the brotherhood they don't have the technology that the brotherhood of steel does they don't have the actual first responder training of the responders right the responders are built up of people that were police officers and firefighters and from the military and so on and have actual experience in these areas and the free states are just people um but they're not like raiders either and I think that if you don't know much about them and you're just kind of encountering their things, it can they feel very raidery. Um, but they're not they're <laughs> like the exact opposite of a raider because they don't take things from people. They cultivate their own farms and they scavenge for their own materials and they just try to be resourceful. Um, and they just. They just do what they can. <laughs> more, more miniature de death claw uh, <laughs> activities in I the background. Death claw. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So by 2084, right? So they leave the their bunker in 2079. So five years later, they for, the free states had turned into a successful trading hub, a little trading town, um, Harper's Ferry, and the surrounding areas uh, were available to provide aid to anyone who needed it which is super awesome mm -hmm. and all was going well you know and a lot of this feels a lot like what we just talked about with the responders where like things were really looking up like yeah and that's where it, it ends too right point. things are good it just that's <laughs> that, that's where it ends this is where we come in everything's What's fine so frustrating <laughs> is that it really like and we joked about that last time too it really could have been that good like truly if we just look at this and even if this was like the real world if you were to look at this as an example of like what human beings would do um mm -hmm. in these circumstances not so much with the raiders but with the the free states and the brotherhood uh somewhat and the responders things look really good like this seems like somewhat of a an ideal depend like for the situation right they're just making the most of it um and it's so disappointing that of course the enclave releases the scorch beasts and yeah. starts the scorch flag yeah. and all of their hard work gets destroyed in days um which is it's awful <laughs> so, yeah it's it's amazing how how these groups started to band together and really pull themselves up by their own bootstraps and yeah. started to build back um something that could have turned into something that would last the area was safe enough from the majority of the radiation and the bombs that had dropped on other parts in the country that they very much could have done that you would have had these different groups and different ideologies but they all seem to be working for the greater good except for Eckhart and the releasing of the Scorched Plague. Because that right. that There's, basically ended everything. There's no reason. What was the reason? <laughs> Everyone was doing so well. It's so frustrating. So yeah, so by 2086, two years later, uh, Harper's Ferry is just devastated you know they've they had come so far and i don't have any real numbers on like how many people they had at their their height or like how mm -hmm. successful they were in any way there's no actual numbers for any of this um the actual amount of uh, things you can dig up about the free states is incredibly limited right, um right. and i think it'd be really cool if they took more time to dive into it because it is it is so interesting and honestly realistic <laughs> yeah. um yeah and I think it, it, they're just, they're so interesting. But yeah, two years pass, free states essentially gone. Um, but at this point, they're still, you know, they still struggle. They're still trying to like 
push forward. So they leave Harper's Ferry and they're kind of figuring out a new course of action. They don't know what to do, but they have to change something because this <laughs> these giant flying beasts are in the air. <laughs> the radiated suddenly, bats are, are, are pooping all the over the place. Bats yeah. Are, yeah. And like throwing up radiation everywhere. It's so weird. Um and like what what do you do? So they they come up with uh the scorched detection system, which uh is invented by Abigail Singh is her name, and she was one of the, the survivors from uh the people left over from Harper's Ferry. Mm-hmm. And basically uh the scorch detection system or uh it's also known as Operation Cooldown. Yeah, that's a cool was name. Meant Operation to- Cooldown. Yeah, it's a cool name. Um, it was meant to allow the free states to detect certain radiation signatures as they would pass through different areas. I do not know the technology of this or if this is a thing that would work in real life or with the materials they had or any of that. Right, um, right. Well, it's, it's all they fantasy don't technology. Either. And, it, you know, well, so, yeah. Well, okay. here's the thing uh-huh. is that. They didn't even finish it. Right, <laughs> right, right. So who knows if it would even work because it, it didn't work. It never happened. And right. so, But it's an interesting um, idea, this uh, this concept of being able to detect the scorched before or while they were in transit or moving from one place to another is kind of an right. early warning system. And had a group like the Brotherhood of Steel had this kind of technology, they may have been able to uh, more tactically engage with the scorched threat um you also could Mm -hmm. build defenses and underground places and and ways for people to take cover if say a wave of scorched uh scorched people scorched beasts scorched animals or whatever happened to be migrating over you know towards where you were living uh there are uh, it it makes a lot of sense It's, it's it's a very smart defensive and potentially offensive system that could have given you an advantage through the information it provided. Right, it would have been really cool. Um, and I think that, you know, of course, the tragedy of all of these factions is that they did not work together. They couldn't get it uh, past their differences, if you will. Right. Um, but right. if you if you can think about, uh, I know we talked about the responders, and they were developing a cure yeah. for the Squished. They got pretty far into it. Um, they were just a little too late, right? But had they been able to do that and also work with the free states who could locate said scorched Mm -hmm. they could work together to get rid of the plague like it was nothing right if they have all this technology and the brotherhood for example if they came in um and what's so i keep saying it's so frustrating but literally all of this is so frustrating (laughs) and like the amount of time that i've dug through this lore now and like i just have to keep seeing this (laughs) over and over all the sad endings all the uh, (laughs) yeah they were so close oh and like What's so frustrating is uh, we know now that the responders were allied with the free states and the Brotherhood separately, and that they severed those ties. But imagine if they hadn't, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's so many tiny details along the way, uh, had they just gone a little differently, right. could have prevented right. so much. Right. I mean, think about think about the three those three groups, and had they brought together and been able to work together to accomplish faster the things that they were working on. If you had a early warning system for the scorched, you had the mobilization capacity and military might of the Brotherhood, and then also the ability to create and put together a vaccine for the scorched plague, then you would have no longer people in any of those three groups falling to the scorched plague, which means that you would much more, you know, be in better situations to fight it back. You wouldn't have to fear it as much. You'd have the the forces and the capabilities to train other people among the other groups and arm them to fight the scorched plague. And then you would also have the early warning system in order to know how to defend or attack the the scorched. <laughs> you, this is like the three pieces of the puzzle could have come together right here in order to create right. something that would have turned the tides. But it just it just didn't happen due to the inability for them to work together and the timing. It, it genuinely it's it's one of those really frustrating and you know i mean we we couldn't have had a different outcome this is the way the game is played out it's it's so that it's when you leave the vault right it's so that when you leave the <laughs> vault you have these mysteries of what's happened instead of running into a bunch of group groups of people who are you know in the midst of all of this and still mm-hmm. dealing with it you're seeing the the ramifications of the failure to deal with it which i think makes it a little bit more interesting because you don't get the story unless you dig for it. 
Mm-hmm. And you can go through all the missions and stuff, but if you don't pay attention, you don't really get that this is what's going on. Um, I think that there's there's a lot there, and I think that's what makes Fallout games in particular so interesting, is that there is this density of history and the things that came before that you're uncovering as you move forward. So, that's my right, thoughts on and it. It's- I think it's all super interesting. I think it's totally okay that these people are gone by the time they get there. <laughs> Sucks for them. <laughs> I mean, it's it's obviously tragic, but I think that it does allow for an interesting story. Um, it is just to add on to the things that are uh, unfortunate. Uh, when Vault 76 opens up and the Overseer leaves, and the Overseer spends all this time learning about the scorched plague um, and preparing to inoculate people and just can you imagine how it would have been if 76 opened and you did go out and the overseer was like i've got to do these things and discovers that people are already thriving yeah. and that things are yeah. already being reclaimed and like better and like maybe it's not exactly as uh the u.s government would have wanted it to be but People may do, you know, it would have been a whole other story. There was a vaccine. The scorch uh, were being pushed back. There were safe places in in many different communities that you could choose to live and join with communities. Yeah. Yeah. It it would be a a completely different situation. In fact, if there was that kind of uh, working together and then all of a sudden Vault 76 opened up, there would probably be a welcoming Hey, welcome, Vault Dwellers. Welcome back to our community. What things can you bring us? We need people who can do these things. We need more farmers. We need more people who can fix things. We need more, like, which of you have these skills? Come join us. We're we're growing, right. you know? And Vault 76 was so, I mean, everyone in the vault was useful. You know, that's the easiest way, easiest way to put it. They all had something to bring to the table. That's the whole point of the vault. Right. So, right. so they would have fit in. They would have found places nice to fit reunion. into the society for sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Yep, but that's that's not the story we get. That's, that's not, not the story, story we get. So instead, um, we get an empty wasteland <laughs> where people are just now starting to return, and we all just bomb each other and create crazy clown parties and uh, boxing rings and uh, all sorts of and take weird pictures on bridges. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like <laughs> all the craziness that we're doing in the game, which is of course also fun. So, so there you go. Yeah. 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 Um. I think just kind of one last thing to kind of top this off because that's the end of the the lore for today. Mm-hmm. Um, we mentioned earlier that lots of people engage in the cult of the Mothman or other <laughs> seal and like uh-huh. act like they're parts of these. Right? It's fun to like role play characters and mm-hmm. such. Yeah, and some some um, claim to be part of the true Moth- Mothman. They only worship the true Mothman, right. as opposed to the, the crazies <laughs> right. out there who don't worship the true Mothman. The crazies. Yeah. Um, I w- would be curious if anyone, any listeners uh, to this, of this, of this lovely little show we do, engage in any free states oriented things, because I'm, I'm sure probably there aren't very many, um, and the lack of lore is frustrating, uh, because there, there's a clearly a cohesive, a, a cohesive story, mm-hmm. um, but there just isn't, there's not a whole lot to dig into. Uh, so I could understand, you know, there's not a whole lot to see. It's not super interesting to dive in. But if anyone is, I think that part of what's cool of have like for having a community like this is that you can kind of fill in those gaps um, and kind of figure that out for yourself. So if anyone, if any of you listening do engage in free states related gameplay and would like to to share your character and any of that feel free to to tag me or us yeah that'd, that'd be great i would love to see it that sounds so cool yeah yeah for sure i haven't seen I, I can't think of anybody that i know of um i can think of a number of people in the community who are doing certain kinds of other groups but right, i can't think right. of the free states and the free states if if we were to extrapolate this out forward from the decline in the end of the free states to say like last week we talked about um i forget her name but the woman that was forming the new responders that you come across in the game since the wastelanders mm-hmm. update and this idea that like more. somebody's following in the footsteps of these other people and going this is a Heather great idea ellis. yeah ellis um yeah if there was to be a character doing that for the free states i would to think about where they would go with this, they wouldn't necessarily reform the U.S. government as such because the world is different. I, mm-hmm. I think that they're the kinds of people who would be contemplating the philosophy of government and 
what does it mean to have freedom? What does it mean to do things that genuinely benefit the people over the just the people who control you know those kinds of things um so yeah and it's an interesting thing for sure because if you're trying to reclaim an area but you have anarchist values um which can be totally okay right lots of people are anarchists and just want the good for everyone in fact you see that with the free states mm -hmm. um but how do you create order right what if people don't want the best for other like what what does a free state member <laughs> right. do with right. a raider right how do like, you where do how you... do you organize that how do you create laws right. around it how, what kind of governmental system would somebody who is part of this anarchist militia end up creating once they've now mm -hmm. broken away from the system they were pushing against it's an interesting right. question i think it would be really i don't know uh, i don't know that right now i have the answer to that question but I would love to hear some thoughts on that. And yeah, I'm, also, I'm also curious what the people at Bethesda, the, the game designers, are could potentially do with this in the future. Does this become a philosophy that creeps into the settler group that shows up or the raider group that shows up? You know, like, mm. how does this work out? Um, I don't know. I think there's a lot that could be done with this. So it seems like a very open potential kind of thing. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um because i still i really haven't played that much 76 yet i played some i'm like level i don't even know i'm not gonna try to guess <laughs> but i've been playing it a bit lately i've actually played nuclear winter for the first time yeah, uh, this yeah past I, week. I, I saw you it's been fun. i saw you with my you own eyes me. with my eyeballs oh. in my head yeah that's incredible mm -hmm. i'm very proud of your eyeballs mm -hmm. um <laughs> i'm glad i could bless them <laughs> um <laughs> so i've played it but not not a ton you know and right. So I'm curious. I have a question uh, mm -hmm. for you or anyone who knows. Mm -hmm. um, you can obviously explore free states related things that have been left behind. Is there a way to access any of their bunkers, or does it even imply that the bunkers are there uh, somewhere? That would be super. That's cool. That's a good question. I'm trying to remember. They're they're not. Uh, they're they're only in very specific parts of the map. Maybe. Guys, if if you know the answer to this question, please chime in or uh, write us because. You know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking through the different areas, and maybe I want to say yes, but I'm having a hard time recalling it specifically. I could jump in the game and go find out probably. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's that's a really interesting question. Maybe we'll get the yeah, answer I'm and we can curious. talk about it on the next show. Um, yeah, I think it's. I mean, even if there, whether there is or there isn't, you know, Fallout 76 is not opposed to things like mines or uh, oh, yeah. vaults right oh, yeah. or and hidden so government facilities i mean there's go. yeah there's all sorts of stuff you can come across and be like what right. is this why is this here yes i think it would be really cool to be able to explore um a free state's bunker for it to look genuinely different from vaults and other places right it should it should be distinct um they are not associated with any of that stuff in fact they're they entirely oppose it um mm -hmm. i would love to see that and i would love to see a camp, I love when a camp encounter... built around built around free states that would be cool <laughs> oh yeah if we have supposed to we literally have if, shelters if now right take, yeah take a shelter and turn it into a, like a free states bunker that would be cool that would be really cool i challenge someone to do, to do that please <laughs> i then, challenge you and, <laughs> and then uh, tag me in something, and then we can I can explore it myself in game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be very cool. All right, well I think that does it for this episode. Laney, have anything else cool going on? You've been streaming. Cool going on. Yeah, you hit yeah, you hit a milestone again. I hit uh, thirty subscriptions. Very exciting. Nice. Uh, very very exciting. I'm like downplaying it. I I do cry over it. Um, <laughs> it makes you sad <laughs> in in a good way <laughs> <laughs> makes you happy sad happy sad oh but yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun over there so if anyone's interested i've been doing lots of fallout 76 um i've been doing a lot of nuclear winter so if anyone likes to play nuclear winter feel free to hit me up and we can we can do it together i like me a good uh battle royale and it's uh it's okay but i i do enjoy it i like fallout <laughs> it's okay. so <laughs> yeah it's uh the thing i find most difficult about nuclear winter is the density of vegetation and objects on the screen makes it hard really? for me to make out the enemy at even moderate distances um because there's just so much going Actually, on yeah. like yeah there's I, some areas i that find that visual acquisition in other uh other games like that other you know, modes like that for other games is a lot faster. Like you play something like mm -hmm. Apex or uh, 
uh, player known as battlegrounds or whatever and it's it's easier for me to see somebody at a distance um but the visual density in the game is is very very high there's a lot of clutter leaves and rocks and all sorts of things and a lot of those things move and the way your character mm -hmm. runs there's a lot of jostling and movement so you can't just train your eye to look for something in the distance that's moving and then pick it out um yeah i find that that makes it a little bit i'm slower at targeting because of that that's interesting yeah i've mm -hmm. uh i play a lot of well not a lot but i've um i also stream apex and i like apex and i i definitely say that like there is a vast difference in uh, mm -hmm. the the way it looks for one, but also I was talking today uh, to someone I was playing with about um, other battle royales and like just features they have that make things easier, like being able to ping enemies yeah. uh, for your team or being right. able to ping a location or like an item uh, that takes a lot of the hassle out of it. Part of it, it's hard too, because if people aren't using voice chat, right. then there is no other, uh, communication method for method. communicating sure yeah 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 i agree i agree i also feel like the engine is a little bit um i don't i feel like the shots or maybe it maybe it's just uh internet delay it's not as refined as some of these other games like apex legends mm -hmm. um a, a lot of these other shooters are designed by teams that make shooters make competitive shooters whereas this right. is this is a mode from an rpg shooter which doesn't need that same um you know the same kind of thing going on so i think it's a really fun i know that they haven't really updated it in a long time um but if they did i would love for them to add more more locations maybe that could fix part of the the problem with being able to see people right there there are probably areas that may be more or less uh beneficial in that regard to fight in Right, so right now they have Morgantown and Flatwoods, and a lot of that's uh, very hilly, and that's a probably yeah. that's an issue I have with like Fallout seventy six as a whole is that you have to climb up and down so much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes it really hard. It's really hard for a battle royale to have to climb that much, right? Because you're trying to like hide and run away, and like right, it doesn't work. Right. Um, I would love to have hmm. yeah other locations like uh, something in like the cranberry bog would be nuts or like mm. uh, ash heap or like um, you could do one in a different vault right so they have vault fifty one where you like wait in but what if you did one in a vault that would be fun and it would get rid of the the like foliage in the way issue like a really tight map where it's only ten people or something like yeah in a, in well a vault. enough people enough people don't play that doesn't make any sense but yeah there's uh occasionally so few people that are playing nuclear winter currently that you end up in places where there's only 18 people on the whole map mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. nuts yeah it's not the um, most popular mode uh, it, it was very yeah. popular when it came out but it's there's definitely more focus on other yeah. things uh the building and the role playing and a lot of the, those other things the end game uh grind for cool weapons and you know refining your build a lot of that stuff is more popular currently um well cool stuff uh you know i'm i might jump back into it again and try it out um yeah, it's fun, and it helps you level your, like, normal character, yeah. right, in adventure yeah. mode, which is cool. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's also, I mean, it's enjoyable. You know, all of this aside, I've been having fun. <laughs> well, good, 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 good. Well, yeah, go go check out Lainey's streams. She's She streams regularly, Neos Pandora, and uh, I've been doing my daily streams while I work on stuff. I did that this morning, and a bunch of our, our community dropped by and hung out with me for a bit, and I'll be doing that tomorrow, and... Like I, I've said before, I'd love for you guys to come hang out, twitch.tv slash robots radio, and I'll be just editing some content and just making stuff and chatting with you guys, which is super fun. So come hang out with us. We'd love to see you guys. And that does it for this episode. We'll be back next week with our patron episode. And then after that, we'll probably be back, be back with uh, more Fallout 76 stuff. Um, keep on doing some of those things. And uh, until then, stay safe. Try not to get too angry at your neighbors when they ostracize you for being right and offer them a helping Ooh. hand. <laughs> for whatever that's worth. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. A spicy outro today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see you later. <laughs> to plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robots radio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows 
for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.